Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast, Raw Rundown. I'm back up north. My name is Adam Glenn. I'm joined by number two on Jeffrey Epstein's list, Dax. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I literally was mid-drinking my coffee, and it almost came out my fucking nose, you asshole. Uh, I saw you drinking, and that's why I wanted to get it as quick as possible. I, like, I just want to see what's going to happen. Man, uh, this is where we do our top stories of the week in the entertainment news industry. This week is usually a slow week because people are – the shows aren't filming. No one's promoting their sh their stuff because there's no – a lot of people are still away. So there's no really good tools to really promote your stuff. Um, so it is a little slow week in the entertainment news industry as far as news stories, as far as regular stories. How many stories are we going to hear about Epstein's list coming out? Every the, the list is out. The list is out. I'm like – where do I just see a list? Like just yeah, like where do we go? Because I have been looking, and apparently it's so many like pages that that's why it's like slowly coming out. Like you've seen Bill Clinton's name thrown around, you've seen Michael Jackson's, uh, but it, the weird part is like none of these are big bombshell information as of yet. Like Michael Jackson's name was saying that he was at the house but didn't get a massage from a young girl. I'm like, okay. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like, well, why does it like, why are we throwing his name around? Like, that seems very random. Um, David Copperfield did magic for <laughs> Epstein and yeah, let or, a girl know. Like, I'm like, oh, OK. Or, or Stephen Hawking's wanted to make sure that no one associates his name with an orgy. I'm like, yeah, I, OK. It, like, why it's it, really weird ones. I saw a weird story about Stephen Hawking's liking. I saw uh, a Stephen Hawking's liking. Uh, like watching little people undress. I don't know. Weird stuff. I don't know. But I was, I thought I was going to see a lot of good things regarding the uh, the list. Um, mm -hmm. But so well, far, it still may come out. So we like, may fine. we may have to do an update on this come you know tomorrow morning or something. But yeah, uh, we'll see if any more names drop before uh, this episode goes live. Um, oh, guys, so I am back up north. It's uh, I am out of Miami. Some parts of me wish I was back in Miami, but it wasn't a good month in Miami. Usually I do my winter kind of trip there for a little, a couple of weeks and, and hibernate, try to make the winter go by a little bit quicker. But there was like no celebrities in Miami. It was really slow and the weather wasn't great. So I was kind of surprised. But um, yeah, I'm back up running around trying to get back into the beat and um yeah i got really nothing going i actually have i've got some airport information for my tipsters and i rent to the airport for chris christie which is not really um you know he's not really entertainment news driven but he was nice he talked to me and then i got a tip on 50 cent but i didn't even want to go for him um i just didn't care to go for 50 cent it's not worth the part what's he gonna say anyway I, that's the thing is i have like nothing to we have nothing in common <laughs> like if i saw him at a party i'm not gonna go up to 50 cent we have nothing in common not like i have anything in common with chris christie but i feel like i can make him unique and interesting 50 cent there's nothing going on um did i do, were you around when he hosted tmz chris chris christie no 50 cent oh i was gonna say 50 cent i was not uh I, you know what there's so many times I forgot about the because it was easier for you because you were in the studio. I forgot about the times when I was doing my stuff via satellite and there was a celebrity hosting the show. Yeah. I just didn't know. I forgot which ones I've done it for. But he hosted for TMZ. Yeah, he came in and hosted once. It was cool. I mean, he was super nice in person. Yeah, um, I mean, he's 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 not a bad guy. He's actually pretty cool. And I have to say, for as big as rapper he is. He doesn't usually walk around with like bodyguards and entourage. Like he's kind of like low key, which I respect. He flies commercial, which I respect. You don't, you know, you don't see too much, too many rappers doing in the rap world. It's big to fly on private jets. Um, I did last time. I kind of like really interacted with Fifty Cent. It was at the Super Bowl in Miami, which was a few years ago, and Fat Joe gave me a tour, and he's bringing me around like this hotel venue. I forget what the place was. 
and 50 Cent was like, he's like, let me show you 50. And he brings me into the room with 50. And I sure I go into the room, say hi. And 50's like, oh, what's up, man? And then I turn the camera off and it's like this small, like closet room. It's just me, Fat Joe and 50 Cent. He's just like looking at me. It was like, I was like, hey, what's up, man? Thanks for being cool. And I just like said hi. And he was nice. He smiled. He knew I wasn't being like corny or weird. I didn't make it uncomfortable. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, – yeah, I just you don't make, care to go. For you time. make every situation uncomfortable, Adam. Don't Dude, lie. Dude, that is true. That is definitely true. All right. Um, today we are obviously on Fridays. We released the raw rundown. This is the first raw rundown of 2024. So far, no crazy, insane deaths. No insane. I was gonna say this is a big deal for us to get through the first week with no like massive celebrity death. Yeah. That's probably a first in my entire entertainment news career. Yeah, now you just jinxed it. Thanks, God Dax. It. Look at the obituaries in the paper. Oh, you just ruined it. Um, all right. Uh, before we get to our top ten stories of the week, we read your reviews. Dax, do you have a review ready for us? Yeah, I do. All right. This comes from Oshuri Adri. Uh, five stars. Favorite podcast is the headline. I'm obsessed with this podcast and listen to it regi- religiously. I can't remember how I found it, but let's say from Juicy Scoop, since that sounds like a popular concept from hearing other reviews. <laughs> <laughs> I love the inside knowledge on the entertainment industry and how well-spoken both of you hosts are. I will say I was surprised to find out those voices match those faces after looking uh, looking the podcast up on Instagram. Oh, and I don't uh, sleep on any of the old episodes. I download a bunch of them for my overseas flight and couldn't get enough. So much, uh, so much so that I am slowly catching up and dwindling my unplayed list. Finally, there are barely any ads compared to other podcasts I listen to. I'm totally cool with more so that you two are fairly compensated for your awesomeness. Oh, well, thank you, <laughs> Ashuri. I appreciate I pre- it. Ashuri, Ashuri, Ashuri. Thank you so much for that. Very much appreciate. We wish we had more ads, but we don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I know it's you're like, yeah, no ads. Like we kind of wish we did. Um, <laughs> thank you for the reviews, and please keep the reviews coming in. If you already left one, take your partner, your spouse, your friend, your neighbor, your bully, uh, whoever you're bullying, take their fucking phone and leave a review. I don't know. This we helps us out. Uh, I actually just got a text right now. Someone asked me if I want to go get. Uh, I guess Jeremy Allen White is at this coffee shop right now in oh. New York City. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's with Rosalia. Um, but, yeah, someone just hit me up and gave me a tip right now. Said, you want to see what this my, – my buddy sent to me. And he's like, dude, they're at this coffee shop instead of where I usually hang out. He said uh, – um, he said uh, he's – I want to say he goes, tiny guy, leather jacket and beanie. <laughs> did, did Jeremy Allen White. Is, uh, Calvin Klein ads going out that's uh, like no, the big is thing that... online is that he he is now the new calvin klein model and so all these videos are circulating on of him online in his underwear doing the whole thing you could go ask yeah. him about that you could be yeah. like you know it would be interesting go up to him and be like let me see your underwear right now are you wearing calvin that klein? would be uh, that would be he'd be like dude really come on don't do this to me don't I, i'd be do like this. you're the new underwear model let me see him uh, yeah uh, I would ask him, do you like the boxer briefs or do you wear tidy whities Like, do He's you like, uh, go commando? You're like, oh, they're gonna be so pissed at you. Oh man, um, yeah, but I obviously can't get Jeremy Allen, whatever his name is. I can't get him right now because we are doing the raw rundown. Uh, Dax, let's start the top ten stories of the week, starting with number ten. Number ten is Caitlin Bristow. She's addressing the rumors that she is dating Tasha Adams' ex Zach Clark. Um, so this is a little bit of an interesting story because obviously her and Jason Tartik, uh, called off, uh, everything that their engagement after being together for quite some time. And then Tasha Adams and Zach Clark also had called that off. So there was all this speculation that she's dating Zach after a video surfaced, um, of Clark holding her as he wrapped his arm around her, her neck at New Year's at a New Year's Eve party. And and then Jason Tartik and her unfollowed each other on social media. Ooh, I didn't know yeah. that. Wow. Yep. And so she th- she put up a big, huge, long post that I don't want to read, but I'm gonna have to because it makes sense for everyone. It says y- you would think by now I'd be used to the hate. I'm not. Your words hurt. Your shaming hurts. Part of me feels a little sad and honestly embarrassed for you guys because this should be how um, shouldn't be how you spend day one of New Year. 
you shouldn't be this invested in someone you don't even know or respect. I actually, it's actually scary. I know looking inward, you might be even scarier for you, but the bullying is next level. You are allowed to hate uh, or have opinions and feelings, but you don't even know the truth and your, your hate should actually come with consequences. Um, and then she went on, what you see on people's social media does not mean you know them. And that part might sting, but I would never, ever want to switch places with you. Your life seems sad. So I will not take opinions of someone who would not trade places with. I mean, she, she said, I think she's just getting shamed really hard. And I, obviously I can't see the comments that she is referring to in this, but I think people are going after her being like, you break up, you and your boyfriend break up. Now you're dating Tasha's ex and moving on quickly. And it's true though. I mean, people should, you know, I'm like, people should keep their opinions to the side, even though that's all we do is have opinions on other people. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's what we do on this podcast. Here's where it's interesting. Caitlin hosted The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. She So Caitlin was a bachelorette. Tasha Adams was a bachelorette. And then they actually hosted when Chris Harrison was let go. They hosted The Bachelor together. Yep. And so it's like, oh, they're close friends, but they're not that close friends. In fact, I actually – I don't think they – one has, I think one of them doesn't really think that like highly of it. Yeah, like the other yeah. or wasn't like that high on him. And um, I guess it is. I mean, listen, you, when you post a photo like that, obviously on New Year's Eve, there's going to be speculation. So I also think of like, hey, you kind of stir the pot. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? You stir the pot. Like it, obviously people are going to have their their thoughts or their opinions or they're going to – they're going to put throw that idea out there that like maybe Kaylin is uh, hooking but up maybe, with Tasha's think, ex, Zach Clark. And there was also a bunch of speculation that there was cheating going on in the relationship. Which she denied. She, she denied said, that. Yeah, she's yeah. like, that is not true. There was no cheating. Like, move it along. But I also think, like, the way she wrote the post where she's like, you shouldn't be this invested in other people's life. I'm like the reason you're famous is because people invested in your life. People True. And you do that. You have a podcast and you do that. She has a podcast. She does the same thing on a reality show because they were invested in your love life. So you can't now be mad that people are interested in who you're dating, your relationship status, like all of that, because you wouldn't have any of those fans if that wasn't the case. You chose this life. This is like, you know what it is. So yeah, I, Shame, shame, shame. Um, you know, it's so funny. A few years ago, I think it was like two years ago, people asked me, which I didn't do it last year. It would have been like a year in review for us. Probably should have put it on like, who was my favorite celebrity encounter of the year? Who was my worst celebrity encounter of the year uh, of last year? But I think it was like two years ago. Uh, my worst celebrity encounter of the year was um, Tasha Adams and Zach Clark. Uh, oh, really? um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and it made some press, made some like news where people were like, oh my God, they're dicks. And I was like, yeah, they were fucking assholes to me. And it was, uh, I, and it's funny. They were such assholes that Keegan Michael Key saw it because we were at the airport. He's like, "Dude, what assholes?" And I was like, "Yeah, like why? Here you are, who's an actual star and like talented, and here's these people being sort of dicks. Um, they were just not cool, not nice. And I tried to like talk to them off camera. Not cool, not nice. And then it's funny. I saw Caitlyn and Tasha together when they were promoting the Bachelor, the Bachelor, or Bachelorette, whatever they were hosting." Mm-hmm. And Tasha was like kind of being a like, weird at first. Like she's gonna be like, oh fuck, this guy is paparazzi. But Caitlin, who I sort of know, was like, hey, how you doing? And she was very nice to me, which I appreciate. And she talked to me. And then Tasha had to like, oh, like ha- I could see she was like being okay to me, but she had a pit in her stomach. Yeah. And uh, and I feel like now she's just, I don't know, she's sort of she sucks. She's not your favorite. Yeah, she's not my favorite. Yeah, she sucks. Listen, I got nothing to lose. She sucks. Um, But yeah, uh, but Caitlin, I I would say this is what you do for a living. So I I don't know why you could be that mad. I didn't get that statement. But listen, this is what you put out there. Caitlin said, I never cheated on him. But also, if you weren't hooking up with Zach, it wasn't that clear. Why don't you just say it? Oh, but. that's the other thing. She like never clarified. She didn't say like, we're not dating. She just said, I wish I could share my truth. Why don't you? So yeah. why don't you just say we're not dating or we are dating? Go fuck yourself. Like, I don't know why she wouldn't just say what the case is then. Yeah, you're you are right on that. Dax, the number nine story. 
Number nine, Brandy Glanville reveal, revealing that she was left with facial disfigurement due to stress caused by the claims that she was inappropriately that she she inappropriately touched Caroline Manzo during that Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip filming. Do you remember like when that all went yeah. down and Carolyn basically said, I will yeah. never do another one of these shows because Brandy Glanville uh, allegedly touched her breasts and her crotch and all kinds of stuff um, during that filming. And, you know, and Brandy was like, no, 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 no. Like, w- what you guys are hearing is not like the full truth. And that, you know, this whole, the whole filming there, like they're fueling you with alcohol and they're filming you for like 19 hours a day. And it's like, she felt like she was kind of set up. Uh, but she said that she actually had an interview with Entertainment Tonight and said that her lips and her face first swelled up in August, saying, I've had some health issues that have affected my ability to talk, my ability to taste food. My face basically would swell up like it would go into an anaphylactic shock constantly. And I saw seven doctors, and their answer was, was it was all stress-induced Angenoma, I think is how you say that word. Um, yeah. And basically that it's like kind of really messed up her face. She said that she felt like she looked like a pumpkin head um, and she wouldn't do her podcast for several months because I would have to stop and take breaks. It was insane. I, and she says, I really just took my health for granted. She said she cried on her birthday, which was on November 16th. She cried the whole night and thought that this was her new normal, that she was never going to look the same or feel the same. I was just going to be this giant pumpkin head like my mouth. Even now, I get tired of talking. Um, so really kind of scary situation. It's crazy, like, all the drama that goes on in Brandy Glanville's life. <laughs> it really is. You, and it's funny that she said all this because I actually texted you the other day, and I was like, oh, wow, Brandy's – there was a photo that she posted in, like, a, a Santa hat. And I texted you, and I was like, oh, wow, Brandy looks really good these days. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, you did. I, Brandy's one of those people, though. She could walk right by me, and I wouldn't recognize her. Like, she looks so – like, every single girl in L.A. Not every single girl, mm-hmm. but you get the idea. Like, she looks yeah. – there's a lot of girls that look like her. But it's been weird, man. There's been a lot of celebrities who have been having these issues with their face. And, no, it could be, a like, a serious – condition i'm just not aware i'm not a doctor adriana lima the model just also had something interesting like going on with her face well, so I, don't, I didn't even hear about that she, well i mean it's not that recently but she her face is like kind of swell she she got a lot of uh stuff about a lot of criticism about her face and obviously people go first oh she had plastic some sort of plastic surgery mm-hmm. and she got some work done but I don't know exactly. I have to look up exactly what she did to her face or what happened, but I don't know. There's something weird going on. I don't know what it is. Do you you remember when we went to go have Brandy on a while back, like she was having a bunch of medical issues. She like basically postponed coming on to our podcast for a while because there was some kind of weird reaction that she had where her face was all like, I guess like, like I want to say burnt or scarred up or something. And she took a long time to come on to our podcast. Cause she was just like, I, I can't put makeup on. I feel very like self-conscious about it. And then when she came on, she looked totally normal. Well, it's funny. Cause so Adrian and Lima addressed it and she goes, you know, obviously people were quick to jump. Oh, she had a facelift. She did this, she did that. And she posted on her Instagram. She goes, this is just the face of a tired mom of one teenage girl, two preteen boys and like a one-year-old learning to walk and three dogs. Thank you. For her. So she was just saying, um, it was her without makeup and, mm-hmm. uh, oh no, she posted a photo with her without makeup and just said, Hey, I'm just tired. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I really, I don't know. There's a lot of procedures out there these days that people do. And sometimes their face doesn't react to it the best. That's something we might should have on the podcast, like a, a celebrity, well, that's a plastic surgeon who kind of specializes had a plastic in surgeon before. Well, we had, uh, no, we though. had the, the, didn't we have, whatchamacallit, we, we had her, the wife, we had a Dr. Dubrow, we had he- Heather Dubrow. Oh, Heather, yeah, we had Heather, but no, we've had a couple plastic surgeons, like at least two plastic surgeons that came on and talked about all the plastic surgery going on in Hollywood and how many guys do it, but like, it's never talked about when the guys do it, only when the women do it. Yeah, yeah, I should have the guy who did my penis decreasement on the podcast and have him talk about <laughs> it. Uh, he, he does a lot of celebrities, so. Wow, uh, that, they, they actually go smaller? 
<laughs> smaller. <laughs> it can't get any smaller. Smaller. Uh, all right. Let's move it on. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, Kanye West. God damn it. Fuck you, Adam, for putting him in the rundown again. Dude, um, it's just, yeah. Kanye West owes over a million dollars in property and business taxes after failing to pay on two luxury Calabasas homes that he shared with Kim Kardashian, as well as his Yeezy brand that now has four claims against it. Um, so Kanye West Yeezy Apparel has four active tax liens filed against it over the last three years uh, for about nine hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars in unpaid taxes. This is all according to the DailyMail.com. Uh, and then the two homes that, um, in Calabasas, it totals about $101,000. Um, and so that comes to up to over a million dollars in property and business taxes that he owes. And keep in mind, I mean, think of all of the the crap that he has been through in the last few years. I mean, between Adidas, Gap, Balenciaga, and all these brands that dropped him after his anti-Semitic tirades. Um, tanking his two billion dollar net worth down to about four hundred million, um, and so he's just it just feels like money problem after money problem after another. And uh, those two homes uh, that he owned with Kim Kardashian, you remember he got them in the divorce, and now he's apparently behind on taxes with them. Oof. I. I... It, 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 you start to wonder if he just has so many moving parts that he can't control it, and he just has so many people going in and out of his, you know, life that he can't really manage it. It's mm-hmm. um, it's weird. He's got that place in Malibu that he's trying to sell that is like it's just land and like there's like there's no electrics. There's no like electric. Well, he just, he ripped out everything of the home. Yeah, he paid like what was it? Some dumb like eighty three million dollars for the house. Ripped literally. Every single thing out of it, the plumbing, the electricity, the the carpeting, the ceiling, like everything's gone. And now he's like, yeah, now I'm done with it. So I'm going to try to sell it for $53 million. You're like, what? Like yeah. you lost millions of dollars on it. What a dumb idea. He, he just is it's, making very poor choices in life all it's around. It's just so manic. Yeah, it's just the – the I, I don't know. I, I – did you see all the Instagram Church photos that he to talk posted? About Did you see cool. all the uh, that he posted of his wife? Oh yeah, this girl, dude. I, she's, I'm sure she's a a unique, interesting person, mm-hmm. but she's very pretty. No, she's a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, this Australian um, girl. I, I get so weirded out with he, he literally married Kim Kardashian 2.0 though. Like it's yeah. very bizarre. This girl, um, she's, she's she's like around twenty years old, twenty eight years old. She used to work for him. I guess she's worked with Kanye since uh, two thousand twenty. Apparently, she mm-hmm. works in. Uh, she's. I guess she does uh, the like head of architecture. architecture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. What? Wait. Did you, you tell me about these photos? So the photos he posted, he got a lot of backlash online this week because he posted on Instagram. He he's never posted about her. This is the first time he's really like posted about her on social media, and he put up a bunch of photos of her, like really scantily clad photos where she's wearing this like bikini top that I'm telling you the only thing that it covers is her nipples. Like that's it. And she's got this like kind of like really tight corset on. And he just said, this is going to be the year without pants. And he just posted like a bunch of photos of her. And so people were just ripping him apart saying like, why are you thirst trapping us with like these photos of her? You know, why are you, like, you need to be more respectful. This is your wife. You went after Kim Kardashian so much in the past saying that, like, she shouldn't be posting photos of her herself so scanty clad that then you turn around and do it with your new wife. Like, what is wrong with you? Um, anyway, it, it, people just didn't like it. I'm thinking, well, that's kind of up to them. Like, if she's fine with it and he's fine with it, like, let that be up to them. But People didn't like the double standard when it was Kim Kardashian. She wasn't allowed to do stuff. But now that he's got the new wife, now it's okay. This girl, too, she actually seems like she's got her stuff together. She has her undergrad. She has her master's. And, I mean, her family seems – I don't want to say, like, what's wrong with your family? But her family is supportive of her relationship with Kanye West. Uh, Apparently, If they're not, then they – she, they're just going to be out of her life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
sometimes people have to just make the choice of do you support the relationship because you want to be in the person's life still, or if you don't, then you'll probably be cast aside. Yeah, I wasn't mad at those photos though. She's, I mean, they're 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 good photos. She looks good, but Kanye just sucks. That's it. Bottom line, right now, <laughs> and I don't know how you get out of that. You just suck. Um, Dax, the number seven story. Uh, Rachel Lindsay dropping her ex-husband or estranged husband Brian Abasolo's last name from social media after their divorce. Um, you know, Rachel Lindsay obviously became super famous after she was the Bachelorette. Um, well, she did a slight change to her social media appearance after uh, Brian filed to end their marriage. Um, and so she slightly just kind of took his last name off of her Instagram profile. And that was this week and has not addressed the split in length. At least she hasn't. Brian had put up a statement just saying, hey, like, um, if you've been following me for a while, you know, I don't like to put my personal affairs on social media. And I like to keep it a safe space for our family. Many of you know me as a chiropractor and also as a husband. My proudest role so far after four years of marriage, Rachel and I have made the difficult decision to part ways and start anew. He then uh, said, I'm a family man, but sometimes loving yourself and your partner means you must let go. I wanted to hear it. I wanted you to hear from the source before the blogs start making up their own reality. Please respect the spaces of our family and friends as we figure out, figure out our next steps. Good so. statement. But you start to wonder, I, I the to me, the ultimate like ugh, knife in the heart is the drop from social media. And oh, but like, I also like you're not going to follow him on social media anymore, which part of me feels like that's a oh, I don't know if she stopped go. following him. She just took his name like oh, her name gotcha. on that's there was Rachel Lindsay Abasolo. You know what I'm saying? It's gotcha. Like off his last name. Gotcha. Ooh, that must hurt him. I, you know, um, there's not much to say about it except like, ah, uh, it sucks. You I, did I tell you I ran into her at no. BravoCon? And how'd that go? It was good. No, I, I ran into her. In um, the Delano, she was coming back in, and yeah, we ran into each other. We we have obviously a mutual friend because Van, her co-host, I used to work very closely oh, okay. with at TMZ um, for many many years, and so we uh, said hi, and we were just kind of catching up. She had come on um, another show that I did a while back, and anyway, very nice girl. Actually, he did too. I forgot about that. Brian had also come on another show that. I'd I did a while back. Both Brian of them, who? Her husband. Oh, oh, the husband. Okay. Yeah. Um, did she recognize you or? Uh, yeah. So once, um, once I was like, Rachel, it's Dax. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, it just oh, took her. Oh, because she came end. on your show. Okay. Yeah. That's it took how, her a okay. second because, you know, when you see someone, you don't, they're out of place of where you know them from. Yeah. But yeah, she totally knew who I was. We took a photo I, I get- together. I get weird about that because I'm so used to being seen on the street or outside a party. When I go in the party, I'm like, do you know who I am? And it's really <laughs> uncomfortable for me because I feel so weird. Honestly, I feel so uncomfortable weird because I just don't know how people are going to react. And I don't want to be embarrassed or make them feel uncomfortable. So I just stand in the corner. Fun. I had a fun – well, I don't know Rachel. I've never met her. However, one time I tried to – I was outside the catch party – uh, Catch yeah. is like a popular restaurant kind of lounge in New York City, and they were having their like yearly anniversary party. And she was trying to get in, and she couldn't get in. And uh, I saw them like she like trying to, you know, she just couldn't get in. She was like waiting on the corner. Nobody recognized her at all. And then I got in with Rick Ross in his entourage, and Rick was performing there. And it was Rick, Rick, his crew, which was about six guys, two girls, and me. And they're like, his entourage is like, yo, come in with us. Come in with us. I'm like, all right, cool. So I walk in there with them. And I'm walking into this. Again, remember this this, this crew? It's like Rick Ross, a couple of his buddies, two very attractive women, and me. I'm standing out. I look like a pilgrim walking into this <laughs> fucking club. And we're walking in. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm walking with the crew. I feel so cool. Like the rope opens up. I'm walking in with this entourage of Rick Ross. Everyone's like, oh, shit, there is Rick Ross. As soon as I walk in, the security guy stops me. He's like, yo, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm with them. He didn't believe. He's like, there's no way this Amish guy looks like he's with them. (laughs) And uh, then it came like a whole scene like, no, 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 he's cool. He's cool. Let him in. He's with us. And then like, I was like, okay. I was like, because there's like no way that I could be a part of that crew. Like there's like, there's no way this guy 
who looks like he like works in the back at Abercrombie could fucking be with this crew. And Dude, then the funniest was, part was, yeah, the that, part was, that was me at Ice Tea and Coco's wedding. They're like, this guy does not belong here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so nice. They put that waiter just like is partying with everyone. That's so cool. But here's the funny part. So then I'm at the, I'm in the club lounge with Rick Ross and his crew party, and they have like a table and bottles and stuff like that. You know what I'm doing, and. Uh, Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock came to the table. And again, this was years ago. And I don't have like a great relationship with Chappelle. Like he doesn't know my name, but he he knows my face. He's like, yo, what's up, man? Look at you. Like, what are you doing here? What are you doing with this crew? I'm like, yeah, look at me. I'm like, it just no one understood why I was with them. And I looked so weird. Um, but that was like one of my like I made it nights. And then that's so funny. Little did they know I was the one who like left early because like I'm tired and, just, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to do like Uber. I didn't even do like I can't even afford like a regular Uber. I think I had to do like an Uber share to go home. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> I'm so poor. Uh, uh, all right, Dex, number six. Number six, Cardi B says she is not back with Offset. Uh, despite them hanging out on New Year's Eve together. She wanted to clarify the situation and their relationship status after they were spotted celebrating New Year's. Um, Cardi went on ahead and cleared up things, saying they're not together. But yes, they did hook up on New Year's Eve. So she did, you know, one of her live streams on um, on social media. Yeah. I fucking love Cardi B. I'm sorry. She's ridiculous. I She's love a her character. so much. She's a character. She's a cartoon character. She really is. She So she gets on there. She goes, I just want to be clear to you guys because you guys are making up your own assumptions. And I just wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth. I was clubbing with my baby's father yesterday. Yes, I did get dicked down yesterday. Absolutely. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> She said, uh, she, she basically said that they were hanging out in the same club um, in separate section, decided to just chill and have a good time together. She goes, I feel at a point of where we're at in our relationship. We've been together for seven years. We've been married for seven years. I didn't consider that we're back together. The answer, uh, the answer to getting back together is not a good, uh, is not a good night at a club and fucking all night long. We need to work our shit, work on our shit. We need to work on our communications. There's things that he needs to work on, and there's things that I need to work on. Um, she goes, it was a fun night. And uh, then guess what? The next day we were arguing. The next day I'm blocking. The next thing you know, we aren't talking for four days. I don't want to keep that cycle going. She said that they are in couples therapy and that it if it goes well, we'll be back together. If it doesn't go well, then it doesn't go well. But I always want to keep a healthy relationship. I fucking love her honesty. Like, I love it so much. She has zero filter, but it is the most, she is probably the most authentic human in Hollywood because yeah. there is no filter there. And so I think that is why people love her so much and myself included with this because there's no hiding anything. Like, she doesn't hide anything. She just says, like, this is who I am. You love me or you hate me, but like this is who I am. Yeah, it's fun. Honestly, it's fun. It's a she controlled her own narrative by just being real honest and uh, and also funny. Like it's just a funny. I got did down. I get dig down for New Year's? Yes. Yeah, that's like that's so good. It's so good. Um, yeah, just a great line. Uh, did I get dig down? Yes, from my. my it's, <laughs> It's such a good line. She's just a she's a cartoon character, but she's funny and she's cool and uh, she's great. I told you about my time with her, right? Yeah, I you've got yeah. the best photo on your yeah. I got a I got a I got a great photo. I got such a good photo. Check out my Instagram. I think it's like one of my top photos. My photo with her is so. My Instagram is at Adam Glenn G L Y N. My photo is so good with her that people don't even believe it's her. And yeah. she was so cool and nice. And I was only supposed to get like three questions with her. And then I was like, I felt so bad. I was like trying to wrap it up because I was felt a little nervous around her team because they were kind of rough and they weren't like really excited to see me, but she was just so cool and nice. And I think she wanted to talk to me more, but I was like, uh, I gotta go. Cause I just didn't <laughs> want to make it uncomfortable. I was like in a field in Miami. It was the weirdest yeah. thing. I was on her tour bus in a field in Miami and there was very good chances that it would end well. And I, but she was so cool. So nice. And, uh, I love it. She's awesome. All right, Dax, what is next? What number are we at? Uh, we six. are number five. Five, finally. Yeah, yeah, we're only halfway five, through Dax. this thing. Jeez. I know. I'm talkative today. What's number five? 
Uh, number five, Christina Aguilera showing off a 40-pound weight loss. Um, she kicked off her residency in Las Vegas. Um, this is She was at the Venetian. That's where she's doing her residency. And people are going nuts online right now because she has lost a 40 pounds, according to her, by doing a bunch of diet, exercise, um, and just you could tell she is feeling her body. She, I mean... Christina is one of those people that has gotten a lot of shit over the year, over the years with her fluctuating weight. Um, but, you know, she's also been like, I feel like she's been very, like, positive about it, saying like, hey, look, like, I like that I have a booty now. She goes, when I was younger, I didn't have that. And so she's like putting on a couple of extra LBs. Like, I started to get curbs and I started to get a butt, like, and admitting that she liked it. Um, so I was kind of surprised to see her drop weight, but, um, basically she's got a balanced diet, dedicating herself to boxing, strength training, cardio workouts. Um, and then I guess also she's restricted daily food intake to 1600 calories and doing a rainbow diet uh, after her having her son. And so she's really struggled over the years. And if she is loving her weight, then I'm happy for her because that, that is one of the hardest things that people deal with is that that up and down and diet and hopefully she's doing it the natural way. Um, you know, you see a lot of weight loss right now after the the whole Ozempic shit going around, but I'm hoping that it's done in a healthy way. Yeah, um, she looks great. She looks really good. She actually yeah, is really good on social media. She always puts out good content, and she's uh, yeah, she's awesome. I, I don't know. I I like how Christina carries herself in the media. Like she comes mm -hmm. out when she wants to be seen, and then when she doesn't, she kind of stays quiet. I just think she she handles being a celebrity very, very well, and she's very nice when she comes out. And I mean, I I would be curious how, how her um, Vegas show goes. Like, is she gonna do? Is she gonna dance herself? What is she gonna do? Yeah, I, I mean, there's, I, I, there's I just videos like of her. her. She she's on. She posted a bunch of stuff on uh, on her social media platform. Go check it out. It's a bunch of concert footage and photos and. It looks like it's probably a pretty good performance. She honestly, one of the best voices ever. Her voice yeah, is she's, unbelievable. Her voice is great. I just, I remember she's, she's saying like, talk about her enough. she sang a Whitney Houston song once. And I just thought there is no one else that can pull off a Whitney Houston song. You know, like a really, that's, that's a tough person, a tough act to follow. And she, she could crush it. Yeah. She's, um, I don't feel like people talk about her enough. She's uh, she's just a very interesting person. Looks great. Legend. If you grew up uh, during our era, like she was just sort of iconic. and uh, But iconic in a way where she was just – she came up during a really interesting time. As far as music-wise, what do you have? Jeannie in a Bottle, that Moulin Rouge. Great voice. But there's no like song today, uh, uh, Beautiful, but not enough like – classic fighter songs. fighter but fighter uh dirty uh, dirty came on uh dirty. the radio the other day and i was like oh i forgot this thing was a jam man this was a but good she song. also came up during a time where it was like the last of the music videos as well when there was interesting music videos remember the show on mtv it was uh making the video so she did mm -hmm. a lot of the christina making the videos which kind of built up the allure of the song i mean we're hand in hand so she just came up at a different time but i like her she's very cool dax the number four story uh, number four story, Selena Gomez saying that she may have only one more album in her that she's tired. Uh, she kind of just wants to focus on acting moving forward. <clears throat> uh, basically, she sat down. She did the Smartless podcast. Um, when is she stopping by our podcast? I mean, she's doing there. She's doing ours, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do uh, uh, she basically opened up about her career and goals. She said, you know, like, I, I, I think I've got one more album. Um, but basically, she, she admitted that she she kind of fell into music is really what it came down to when she was doing Wizards of Wa Waverly Place. They had her obviously singing a bunch. And so she's like, it was a side passion of mine, but she never anticipated at doing as much music and recording as many albums and doing these tours as she did because it was just kind of like a side thing for her. And she goes, if I had to choose, I would choose acting. I think she really loves acting and she wants to focus on that long term. Um, it's funny that you kind of 
even though she's she's been in a lot of things, you forget that acting is her number one thing because her music career became so big that it almost eclipsed her acting career, right? Yeah, yeah. She, I, I, honestly, when you see she's making one more album, I, I feel like that's how she connected with her now boyfriend, Benny Blanco, who's a music producer. They're probably maybe working on some music, and that's how they kind of reconnected, or I'm sure they've known each other for years because Benny's been around the industry for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, have you watched Only Murders in the Building? I, I haven't. haven't I mean, I've, I've heard good things about it. I mean... I, I love Steve Martin, love Martin Sheen, or Martin, Martin Short. Martin Short yeah. um, I just have never watched the show, honestly. I just think when it comes to – writing an album is a lot of work, and uh, acting is like you show up, memorize some lines, and you do it. So I I, I understand. I think about it. Like I, the, the money for singing is going on tour. Tour life is not an easy thing by no. any means. Like yeah. going from city to city, living in hotels, like it – no, no one has ever like described touring as a fun thing. Like it always sounds miserable. Yeah, so I can understand no. it. It's like, no, I can act, I can do my thing, and then I get residuals every time it plays for the rest of time. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of work. The music industry, and you're like you said, the you make your money in touring. Acting, she kind of knows where she's going to be. You'll have more of a set schedule. Obviously, she doesn't need the money. So yeah, I mean, she got uh, her makeup line that is crushing it. So, I mean, that's something that she can. When you're touring, you're around the world. When you're acting, you can do that, and then go over and worry about what your next lipstick you're going to be, you know, putting out there. She she she's doing really good for herself. Um, yeah, no, I uh, I get it. Um, it, it's a I understand where she's coming from. I know it's so funny, dude. Sorry, I I'm changing the subject real quick. I just I get a message once a week. Mm-hmm. for someone who wants to get in touch with Shaquille O'Neal. And I'm like, I don't work. Like, I know him. We're friends, but I'm not, like, close to him. And, um, like, like, like I, I can't – it's just crazy, the amount of requests. Like, and I'm like, dude, no. Like, I wouldn't have well, the balls to give I was someone. one of those assholes that hit you up for, for a request, remember? Yeah, and I, did I succeed? Yeah. and i can tell you to this day i'm still my nephew's number one hero because i got that video of Shaq wishing him a a happy bar mitzvah yeah no it was um that was kind of interesting but i every week someone hits me up like hey can you get can you ask Shaq to do this i'm like dude come on like i would never hit someone else up like and and, and do that. I'm like, I just, it's just awkward. It's very uncomfortable for me. Um, all right. But yeah, Selena Gomez has one more album in her. Totally get it. Understandable. She wants to do less work. It's not about working harder. It's about working smarter. And when you act, you have more of a regular schedule and money. She doesn't really need the money. And it's, it's a lot of work to make that money. And I also don't know if Selena could sell out. A ma- yes, she could. Yes. You think she, Selena, you think she would Selena sell like the forum? Gomez broach. Sit down. I don't know. I don't know if Selena sell out arenas. You're out of your mind. I'd be curious. Miley, oh, yes, Selena. Oh, damn it! I said 100 percent again. God damn it. <laughs> Miley, yes, Selena. I don't know. Yes. Stop it. Stop saying dumb All right. shit. Of course, Sorry. you could sell out an arena. Do you think? Uh, what's the football stadium in LA? What's that SoFi? called? SoFi. Do you think Miley Cyrus could sell out SoFi? My, wait, are you talking Miley or Selena? I'm asking. I'm asking you about Miley. Do you think Miley yes. could sell out so far? Okay. Do you yes. think Selena Gomez could sell out so far? Yes. You think Selena? How many people? That's got to be sixty thousand people at least. Dude, it's Selena Gomez. Like, what is wrong with you right now? I don't know. I don't. I'm surprised. I, I, listen, I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm definitely confident. I'm just yeah, she's shocked. Got by a, that. She has a ton of hits. She is one of the biggest people on social media. There is no doubt in my mind if Selena Gomez tomorrow was like, I'm going to do my last concert, everyone would go see that at, at so far. All right. All right. Let's uh, get to the uh, top three stories because uh, we got like three more left. I got to go to lunch with my dentist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you get free dental work? Dude, not even. He charged me for a fluoride the other day. And then he's like, hey, we should get lunch. I'm like, you just charged me thirty dollars for fluoride, dude. Like, really? You want to get lunch? And like, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna be so self conscious about my teeth in front of you. Like, you know, like, what? It's gonna be so weird. He's a really nice guy. Uh, shout out to him. But I'm just like, um, 
um, yeah, so I have to go to get lunch with my dentist. I don't. What am I so doing? Random. All right, Dax, the number three story. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Woo, he is pissed off at Aaron Rodgers um, and actually threatening to sue him over um, Aaron's basically saying that Jimmy is tied to Jeffrey Epstein, um, <laughs> which is not a funny joke in Hollywood right now. So Aaron Rodgers was on the Pat McAfee show where Rodgers and the other hosts began discussing the impending release of the, the list of, of names of high-profile people rumored to be associated with Epstein. And uh, he, he basically made a joke saying, oh, well, there's a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are, who are really hoping that list doesn't come out. And Jimmy, ooh, mad, bad, mad, basically went onto his social media and said, dear asshole, for the record, I have not met, flown with, visited, or had any contact whatsoever with Epstein, nor will you find my name on any list other than the clearly phony nonsense that soft-brained wackos like yourself can't seem to distinguish from reality. Your reckless words put my family in danger. Keep it up, and we will debate the facts further in court. Woo! Jimmy, so, like Jimmy, didn't even make it into a joke. Like there is, like he is saying, there is nothing funny about the bullshit that you are spewing out of your mouth. Hey, uh, I'm like torn. Wouldn't it be, be wouldn't it be a crazy plot twist if his name was in the list, though? Yeah, I, I'm a little bit torn <laughs> on this because there's two things. A, Aaron Rodgers is a little bit of a tinfoil hat guy. Um, mm-hmm. He's kind of like a wild in his thoughts, and not to say wild. He's a little bit more outside the box with his thoughts and opinions. Maybe in medicine, as uh, you know, like he's just he, he, he's a little. I wouldn't. I don't even say he's out there because he's a little bit more forward thinking. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but he said he said it. But then here's Jimmy Kimmel saying. Dude, don't ever bring that up. Don't say this. But well, yeah, because that, it could ruin his full career. Like you could literally get true. canceled with your name being on these lists. However, but Jimmy Kimmel, I don't know how Aaron Rodgers said it. If he was sort of joking around, and but it doesn't. Jimmy matter. Kimmel does that for it a living as well. It literally doesn't matter. Like no one wants to be associated with this shit because your career will fucking end like instantly. So him even bringing up his name, he's like. That's not funny, bro. Like, there's funny jokes, and then there's that shit. Like, don't do that. Yeah, it's – but the internet, when I say – I'm torn to this because it's just another way of thinking about it. The internet, there's a lot of people – when I say the internet, there's a bunch of people behind their computer saying, like, hey, this, this is what you do for a living. Like, just t- take it take it in strand, you know? So, so I don't know. It's, did, did, does, did Aaron and Jimmy – do they have a, a shitty – relationship already like I'm do they sure not like each other i have to, i don't know specifically but i have to imagine that jimmy kimmel has poked at aaron Rodgers in the past and made some mm-hmm. jokes about him at his you know so that's i don't know for sure i just wonder like maybe, why his name would even be a name that gets thrown out by aaron Rodgers. like do they just not like each other and it was like a a dig and i'm just curious i i don't know yeah. their history Jimmy Kimmel pissed though. Jimmy Kimmel actually, dude. So Jimmy Kimmel, I, so there's out there. Jimmy Kimmel apparently went to dinner the other night for Jim Carrey's 60th birthday. Check out this dinner. Tell me how cool it'd be just a waiter or a fly on the wall at this restaurant. Ready? It's Jimmy Kimmel. It's Bill Burr, Jeff Frost. Obviously, it's Jim Carrey's 60th birthday. Um, who else? It's um, Adam Sandler, David Spade, Howie Mandel. Uh, I mean, it's that'd be a uh, dope room to be in. Yeah, that's a pretty cool room to be in. I mean, just hearing the stories that these guys have, I mean, it's just so cool. And I'm, I'm like, I love Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. I just, to me, I love Jim Carrey, and I love Adam Sandler. Like to be in the room with both of them, <laughs> it's so cool. Just, I would just love to hear their stories from their perspective. When we heard them being interviewed a lot, but I just want to hear like. Obviously, you hear one thing when they're doing a, a long-term interview, like a long-form interview. But I just want to know, like, tell me the real truth. Like, tell me how you really feel without getting heat on it. And uh, that's got to be a really cool experience, or just being in that room. All right, Dax, the number two story. Number two story, Nigel Lithgow getting hit with 
two uh, more sexual assault cases in less than a week. Um, Nigel Lithgow, obviously, a very, very well-known producer in Hollywood. He was one of the co-creators from So You Think You Can Dance. He was also one of the big producers behind American Idol. Um, that's I had met him um, when he was back in his American Idol days because he came into TMZ. They did this whole cross-promotion but because we were both Fox shows and they brought in all their contestants. We gave them media training, this whole thing. So I have met him personally. Um, but earlier in the week, Paula Abdul accused him of sexually assaulting her twice over the past 20 years. If you remember, there was this whole like Realm of Accountability Act, which allowed um, people to come forward that hadn't previously come forward because of the statute of limitations. She filed this. And then, uh, and then there was, uh, again, this second claim of sexual advances, but it was filed after the 31st, which was the deadline. So I don't even know if a court will allow these this second claim of sexual assault to pu be pushed through because the dates on it um, were, were filed too late. And I know that this was probably filed because of Paula Abdul's claims towards him. Someone said, oh, wow, like she's filing. I'm going to come forward and file now. But they kind of missed the date. So we'll see how this ends up um, unfolding. Um, have you ever had any interaction with him? I met him once outside the London Hotel. Uh, nice guy. I mean, nobody recognized yeah. him at all. Um, like he could just walk around. And nobody cared or no one even knew who he was. But I met him outside the London Hotel. He was nice. Interviewed him. It was what it was. Like I, I don't I don't have his number. I don't talk to him. Yeah. But what it was it was so, nice. So basically this, this new – filing um, says that uh, this was from when he was filming the All-American Girl and there's contestants that are coming forward saying that um, after the show's finale party um, he allegedly drove two of the girls to his LA home and um, with a promise of a to like meet up and then the, he's, the defendants say that he made sexual advantage, advances towards them that were unwanted at his house. And um, and then I would say Paula Abdul's was very similar. Like she was saying that he was making advances towards her unwanted advances uh, a couple times throughout their history of working together. So uh, I guess we'll see how this whole thing unfolds. It's all still pretty brand new as of this week. Yeah. Uh, that's when Paul Abdul press charges like, whoa, that's a, you know, that's a big celebrity going after Nigel. Nigel is a legend on the, in the dance world. You know, he's been on TV for a while too. So you wonder what his future is going to be with being on television because of the accusations. Um, it is what it is. So we'll see how this kind of ends up. It is definitely like caught off guard because I don't, I don't know. We're just caught off guard by this story. That's really yeah. Dax, the number one story of the week. It is all about Ian Ziering. Uh, he has been all over the news the last couple of days after getting into uh, an insane little altercation with a biker gang in the middle of Hollywood, uh, which ended up damaging his $100,000 Mercedes. Um, it was a really weird thing. So there's actually video, and it's on Hollywood Boulevard, right in front of like the Chinese theater and the Kodak theater, I guess it's not the Kodak theater anymore. Um, but where they have the Oscars every year, he was driving down Hollywood Boulevard. There is this motorcycle gang. And when I say motorcycle gang, it's actually like tiny little motorcycles. It's not uh, even they, a motorcycle. I see this. Ha we see it happen in New York city a lot. Cause obviously some of our listeners aren't uh, in major cities or, they might not be aware of it. So what happens is it's like these like crew of like biker type people just kind of get together, not necessarily a gang, but they just kind of, they're, they're, they're not like, it's they like do tiny. like hooligan type stuff. Yeah. But these are like little bikes, but they're hooligans. They just take up traffic. They do, they drive on sidewalks. I mean, it's just, it's honestly, it's really dangerous and screwed up yeah. and you just can't really do much about it. I've seen it happen so many times. It's insane. But they're um, but like, yeah, they look like kids size motorcycles that adult humans are riding on. It's very weird. So if you watch this video, TMZ has a bunch of videos of this, but um, you see him and his Mercedes, and then there's all these little bikes, and then two of the bikes kind of go in front of his Mercedes and block him off, and then he gets out of his car, and 
there's like a bunch of punches are being thrown. And the next thing you know, four of the guys are surrounding him and everyone's throwing punches. And he ends up kind of getting out of the way and running across the street to get away from the altercation. But um, there's photos of his, his car. The whole front windshield is smashed. The side rear view mirror is smashed up. And apparently his 12-year-old daughter was in the car while all of this was going on. So um, she was all kind of shook up. Uh, Apparently, no major injuries, nothing like that. Uh, But it was a very scary incident. And And when you see him kind of like ditch his car and running across the street, I'm just thinking, oh, wow, like, Number one, his car is going to get stolen. But then I'm thinking, oh, shit, his daughter was in the car while it was all going on. That has got to be so scary for her seeing her dad being attacked by four people. Um, but then there was a second video that came out. I don't know if you've seen this one, Adam, where he is the one that, like, throws the first punch. Like, he gets out and just, like, goes for the guy. So it wasn't, like, necessarily he was a, attacked, like, kind of the first narrative that was going around. Um, but that's kind of where it started. So you don't know what happened before that video. Like if they smashed his window before, or like, I don't know. Um, but he, he put out a big statement, you know, just saying like the police need to be doing more about these kind of like little biker gangs that are going around causing havoc and chaos and they're just not stopping them. Um, but Brian Austin Green actually jumped in. He goes, I'm surprised these guys would want to fight with Ian because he's a monster The dude, like, literally works out every day. He's huge. He's jacked. He goes, uh, you know, do what you got to do, brother. You're a beast. Um, So good on you for, like, protecting yourself and doing what needs to be done. Yeah, I mean, he – when it comes down to the video, the actual incident, I mean, he got out of a very rough situation. I mean, it was him versus a lot of guys. And obviously, he's not going to beat them up in a fight. He kind of – he did the – I don't want to say he did the right thing. He kind of ran off from them. Yeah. And from taking some stuff. So good on him to kind of act quick and kind of act smart in that situation. Get out of there. Because if he would have stayed, he would have got his ass kicked. Because what are you going to do when there's five, you know, four, five, six people all jumping you at the same time? Like, you can only hit so many people. Exactly. Do I think it was the smart decision to jump out of your car and maybe even allegedly possibly be the first one to throw a punch? No. Uh, no. However, but they like blocked I, I, his car, so that's they, where I, I wonder like what happened before because they purposely like went to block off his car so he couldn't drive. So well, it seemed like they were interested in getting into some kind of altercation with him. Yeah, well, I think what really ticked them off is they said Mero's place over nine hundred two one zero. That <laughs> him, uh, that really pissed him off and said, "Okay, now we're getting physical." <laughs> um, but oh, uh, yeah, I, I I understand his frustration. It's like it's like, it you, sucks. You, it's the you know crazy funny? story. I've been involved in the situation, some like not to that extent, but it's it's a shitty situation. He's right. These are it's well, hooliganism, and it's just it sucks. Whenever anyone comes to LA, they're like, "Hey, where do we go? Like, we we want to see celebrities. Should we go to you know the Walk of Fame? Should we go to Hollywood?" And I'm like, "You're never gonna see a celebrity there." And then I'm laughing that, like, this literally happened in the m- biggest spot, the most trafficked celeb- or, like, fan-driven area, and he is running out of his car getting in a fight with people. Like, can you imagine being there? Can you like, imagine? Is that Steve Sanders running around? Like, what's happening right now? <laughs> imagine be, Dude, I don't even know what I would do in that situation of a celebrity – I don't know who they are from big to from a list to D list runs. I'm like, what is going on? Like I'm, yeah. I'm here. I'm a tourist from Kansas city trying to find a celebrity on the walk of fame, taking photos with my hands on the with stars and the handprints. And all of a sudden Ian Zeering comes out of nowhere running for his life. Like help, help. I'm like, I'd be like am I in a movie? What is going yeah. on here? Wow. This well, is really what it's like. Well, that was me when I was driving down there and David Hasselhoff appeared out of nowhere to take a photo of himself with his star. I'm like, What's happening right now? <laughs> yeah. This is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it, it can feel like a movie. And for those tourists that day, must have been like, what is going on? Like, that is so great. Yeah, so weird. But, guys, that is our top 10 stories of the week. Thank you guys for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. That really helps us out. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We're on it all. We have a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which you guys should join. It's a really good community where you guys can talk to us. We talk to you. And uh, it's really cool. Follow me at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holtz. And we'll see you guys next time.
Bye bye. Bye bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.